Hi again, so uh, this is a quick short quote analysis from Act 1, Scene 5. So in Act 1, Scene 5, this is the introduction of Lady Macbeth. It's the first time we meet the character. Um, and here she is reading a letter from her husband Macbeth. And it's detailing the witch's prophecies. Um, interestingly, she then begins to plot to kill Duncan. So bear in mind that we've already seen um, Macbeth have the same idea. We, we, can perhaps consider that they're quite well suited as a couple, um, well matched with their intentions. Um, however, it's when we start to look at this quote and analyse it in a bit more detail that we see that Lady Macbeth here in Yet yeah, I Fear Thy Nature, it is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way, um, assumes that Macbeth will hesitate that he won't be able to complete the task. Okay, so although we could perhaps say that they're well matched because they both have the same, they're well matched with their intentions, with their ambitions, potentially they're not as well matched in how well they know each other. Okay, so she's assuming, she's she considers that Macbeth isn't evil enough. However, that's quite a contrast to what we've just seen. Okay, so in Act 1, Scene 2, with the unseemed quote, you know, that, that shows us the brutality of, of Macbeth. Act 1, Scene 3, and his commanding um, of the witches, again, shows his, his determination and his... I suppose, um, passion for what they're saying. And then similarly as well, in Act 1, Scene 4, with the stars hide um, your fires quote, again, remember, that's an aside, he's already showing us his own ambition. Um, so again, we need to question, what does this tell us about their marriage, about their relationship? So, you know, she's questioning his commitment, his ability to go through with the act, yet we've seen quite a different Macbeth to the Macbeth that we're going to investigate here with this quote, that late, how Lady Macbeth presents him. Okay, so let's take a look at it then. Yeah, I do fear thy nature. Okay, so she's worried about the type of person he is, the man he is. Um, it's too full of the milk of human kindness. Okay, so we can look at the milk here as a metaphor. It would help if I could spell metaphor. There we go. Um, so let's get that bit highlighted. There we go. So here, the milk is compassion, qualities like sympathy, and Lady Macbeth has a distaste for this. Um, she doesn't seem to think that any self-respecting man should have these qualities. Um, obviously, we can start to think as well about um, associations with milk, okay, the, the liquid form of milk, that it's nutrient-rich, um, it features a lot of proteins, and it's the primary source um, of nutrition for, for infants. Okay, so the fact that Lady Macbeth, a female character, a female character as well in a in a patriarchal society, um, with an expectation, not so much now in, a, in our modern society, of, of women having um, careers as well as taking on motherly roles, but much more of, of, you know, females having, taking on a motherly role, a domestic role, um, this very much goes against, so she's quite, she, we can class her as being atypical here, okay, she's an atypical woman, she's not typical of the time, but 
by suggesting that men shouldn't have these qualities of compassion and sympathy. And actually the fact that it's it's Lady Macbeth that, that we hear from using this, or Shakespeare chooses for Lady Macbeth to use the milk metaphor. Again, thinking about um, the role that mothers have in, in providing milk for their children, that's, that's also quite kind of, it introduces us to a woman who who is very different, and the audience at the time would have seen that. Remember, Shakespeare's quite often, he seems to produce two types of female characters. We have quite meek and mild characters, but then we also have quite kind of controversial and, and very much characters who are atypical of the time. And we'll investigate that further, what, what Shakespeare is criticising perhaps about society in the 1600s, what challenges he sees women face um, and that can also be seen in, in the amount of scenes that Lady Macbeth actually features in. So people will talk about the significance of Lady Macbeth and, and her role in the play and um, yet she actually features in eight out of 28 scenes so she's only in 25% of the scenes and um, she only actually has two soliloquies which are both in Act 1 scene 5 the first time that we see her. This soliloquy and then the, the later soliloquy of come and sex me here. So actually her lack of screen time, I suppose we would call it, in the play is also important. Um, so let's go back to the quote, sorry. So we've got this metaphor of the milk of human kindness. So he's too, she fears he's too compassionate, he's too sympathetic, um, to catch the nearest way. Okay, so that idea there of catch the nearest way, to do what it takes. So Bear in mind, she's read a letter. She's possibly not seen her husband for a little, for a period of time as well because of him being at war, him being in battle. Her first concern isn't necessarily, you know, how is he after this experience? It's, it's, she's assuming that he will not be able to go through with the act of murder which she is planning um, and so that's quite interesting that we have these two characters who we're yet to see together but are both seem very determined in their ambitions to kill Duncan um, and so later on when Macbeth appears um, in Act 1 scene 5 and then also when we see their relationship in Act 1 scene 7 we start to see how they interact with each other and the influence that this character Lady Macbeth seems to have over Macbeth and how all of a sudden he very much seems to change from the Macbeth that we've been introduced to.